They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And from a social developmental standpoint, there's a psychological concept to back that up. It's called an internal working model. When John Bowlby first put forward the concept of internal working models, the only experimental studies used to back it up were of infants' attachment behaviours, such as Mary Ainsworth's strange situation. But in more recent years, developments in the study of attachment across the lifespan has brought Bowlby's internal working models back into the limelight. So, what is an internal working model? Well, at its core, an internal working model is a representation formed around a relationship. It's more than simple memories or visual pictures of a person. It's an unconscious code used to navigate situations and future relationships. Research suggests that these models are shaped by a child's proximity-seeking experiences as an infant and how these experiences were met by their primary caregiver. Once acquired, these models provide a framework which guides behaviours and feelings in future meaningful relationships. People subsequently employ these models unconsciously to predict and interpret another person's behaviour, and thereby plan one's own behaviours in response. And there are many tropes in day-to-day -day life that have their roots in this concept. I mentioned the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, which I'll flesh out in a moment, but also it takes one to know one reflects a lesson learned from this concept. Let me explain how. We use our internal working models to assess situations and judge other people's motives. A child who experiences a warm and accepting mother will thus see her as a source of security and support. This secure attachment enables the child to build a positive self-image, and therefore this child will instinctively view others through this prism of secure self-confidence. An insecurely attached or avoidant child will have had different social experiences, and given that we can only see and understand others through our own personal lens, that is to say making use of our internal working models, we naturally find ourselves projecting our internal truths onto others. Over the years, a lot of work has gone into how we can study these models in adults, where experimental designs such as the strange situation clearly wouldn't work. The most widely used procedure is called the adult attachment interview. This semi-structured interview draws out an adult's childhood experiences where their attachment figures, and the way that that person considers those experiences to have affected later development. In many ways, it's the manner in which these childhood recollections are conveyed that's more important than the content of the memory itself. And researchers have found that adults, like children, can be classified by attachment type. The adult classifications are autonomous, those who are able to discuss their childhood experiences frankly and clearly with references to both positive and negative events. Dismissing those who seem to cut off from the emotional nature of childhood, especially with regards to negative memories. Preoccupied individuals are over-involved in their recollections and can become so overwhelmed that they appear confused and incoherent. And unresolved adults are those who haven't succeeded in reorganising their mental life after experiencing childhood trauma. Interestingly, research shows that not only are these classifications consistent with secure, avoidant, resistant and disorganised classifications in childhood, but such attachment types can be seen to express a degree of continuity across generations, from mother to daughter. Hence, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up to let others know about it. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and the bell for future videos. There's lots more to check out here on the Psychology Unlocked channel and also at psychologyunlocked.com.